Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Today we're following up on last week's video about op amps. We're gonna actually build a duo mixer module based on the mixer circuit I showed you. And for that we'll be using a prototyping kit called Autos DIY from the wonderful people of Intech Studio in Budapest. Thanks guys! In the envelope they sent me came a few op amps, two of their larger proto boards, the power conditioning PCB, some spacers and pots. They were out of the jacks, so I told them I would use my own, but you'll surely get jacks with your kit if you order one. This brings me back to hardcore DIY before I got into building full kits. I have to devise my own routing paths and user interface, which is challenging and fun. Now let's build that mixer. This is the schematics right here, I've redrawn them. We have three inputs going into three 10k potentiometers as voltage dividers, which will be our level controls for each channel. Each one goes through a 100k input resistor onto a common node, which goes into an inverting unity gain amplifier, op amp circuit, with 100k feedback resistor, that's why it's unity gain, because it's the same value for feedback resistor as input resistor. And then we have another unity gain inverting amp just to get the output back to the same phase as the input. So 100k input, 100k feedback. 100 divided by 100 times minus 1 is 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. So you're just changing the sign of the operation. And then I'm using a 1k output resistor here just to protect the op amp output and to set an output impedance that's somewhat compatible with analog synthesizers and the output. So that's it's a very simple circuit. It's a good example of what you can do with op amps. And it's also a good example of what you can do with the Autos Lab prototyping system, which is really cool. It's these guys in Hungary, they had this idea, which comes from just using normal run off the mill proto boards, but they have a few modifications that make it really interesting, really cool. So let's remove the knobs from the pots and we're going to create a layout for a duo mixer. Yeah, this is the all the components that we're going to need to make this. This is all the 100k resistors, the 1k resistors. There are six knobs because there are three inputs for each one of our two mixers. And the reason I'm doing two mixers is because the proto board is a little bit big. It would be a waste of space to make a single three input mixer with this big proto board. So I've already started laying it out. I'll show you guys what this is later. This is a power protection circuit. It's really handy the way that it gets mounted onto the back of these boards with these standoffs. The standoffs also let us use one of the proto boards as a panel and the other one as a circuit and you can detach from the circuit one you can detach this part which is what the part that goes mounted onto the panel so that you can have one of these boards dedicated as a circuit board and the other one as a panel. First I want to just play around with laying it out this is what I'm thinking we're gonna have the inputs at the bottom of the PCB which is a good idea because it keeps the cables out of the way of the knobs it's a good way to lay out a mixer in my opinion and we'll have the outputs off to one side so that it's clear which ones are the outputs and you don't even necessarily have to label anything which is good because these proto boards aren't super great for labeling you know so here we go these are the inputs and the outputs of our two mixers we'll make a dual mixer which you can use as one stereo mixer too. Now we need to allocate space for the circuit. It's a very simple circuit with just a few resistors and capacitors. We don't need to leave too much space for it. This is probably enough. And then up here is where the potentiometers are going to go. So let's prep the potentiometers. The way we do that is there's a few steps. One of them is remove the washer and dryer. No, I mean the washer and nut from each one of the potentiometers. Next, we will, once we've done that with all of them, I think yeah, I have done that with all of them. Next, we'll take a these needle nose pliers and straighten out the, the mounting lugs. 
so that they go in straight and don't get bent underneath the potentiometer when you stick them into the little holes of the protoboard. See, these are 10k potentiometers, which is a good value for Eurorack mixers. Now, the other thing that we do to prep these is we take wire cutters and we remove the position tab from each one of these potentiometers. They come with a little position tab, which in industrial products, the panel would have a little hole where this tab gets inserted and it ensures that the potentiometer won't rotate. But in DIY, we don't do that. We just tighten the nut real good and that's enough. Also, the fact that this will be soldered onto the circuit board helps ensure that it doesn't rotate. So we don't need these position tabs. Cut them off. In fact, not only don't we need them, they will be a problem. If you don't have the little hole on the panel, the potentiometers will be sort of diagonal, will be sort of crooked in there if you don't cut these off. So do cut them off. Wear protection goggles. I wear glasses, so I don't worry too much. But if you don't wear glasses, wear protection goggles because these things can fly into your eye. And also make sure your pets and children are safe before you do this. There we go. So now all my potentiometers are prepped. Let's place them where we think looks like a good position since these are d-shaft and my knobs are d-shaft so there's only one way they can go that makes sense as far as the knob indicator goes let's put one in sort of just to see and that's basically with the three terminals facing down so that the minimum position is seven o'clock and maximum position is uh what's that five o'clock right okay so let's start with the three volume controls. So I left like uh, two rows on this side. So I'll do the same here. And this is a grid, so it's really easy to line them up. You know, you just make sure you make everything symmetrical. Yeah, I think I'll probably just move one of these guys off to the side a little bit. So they won't actually be symmetrically positioned according to the sides, but they will be equidistant to each other. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, now they're equidistant. And let's put the other three, which will be the three volumes for the bottom mixer. And we want these to be far enough from the top ones so that your fingers can go through comfortably so that's a nice ergonomic tweakable module just line them up with the top ones make sure they're in the same row and column so th does that look pretty symmetrical I think it does all right so now we need to calculate where we're gonna drill the panel so we need to sort of figure out exactly where the holes are gonna go you need to be very accurate with how you drill these holes, otherwise they will not line up properly. Let's see how I can do that. I think what I'll do is I'll actually use this board as the panel. I'll remove each pot and mark where the very center of each one of these is and immediately transfer them to this other board. That will be our actual circuit board. That seems to be the more accurate way than to just try to line up visually. So I'll use a marker, this little pink marker right here, probably do. It looks like the center is B3. B so I'll move this guy to here. Just make sure that it's in the same position as you had it on the other board. And that B3 looks like it's the center. So, okay, set this aside and mark the B3 hole as where we're gonna drill for the first potentiometer. Now this one looks like it's gonna be M3, so M3 for this one. And we'll go ahead and place it on here. Whatever happened to the MCs, M3s, times then change for the M3s. That's a little de la soul for you. Anyway, this one looks like X is the middle. So X3 is the where we want to drill. So that's 
that's the three top potentiometers right there good now this makes it really easy for these guys all we have to see is which line which looks like 13 is the place now we need to mark the jacks I can look inside the hull and see exactly which little square represents the middle that's 34 Y there we go now go ahead and put it on here so that I see 34 Y through the little hole and looks like I nailed it so good this is very visual and manual way of prototyping things I didn't need to use any sort of computer aided design I like to do things like this very visually and manually so good so this is already part of our circuit board with all of the panel components all set and we've already marked our panel where all the holes are going to go now let's go and drill them made my holes and I'm lining up the panel with the circuit PCB and everything looks good like my markings are centered in the holes I did hurt myself a little bit do use protection when you're drilling stuff so now we're gonna set up the panel components in their respective spaces and solder them up be the first thing we're gonna do Oh, the smell of fresh blood. Let's see if our panel lines up with our circuit board. And it's like it does perfectly. So now let's put on some washers and nuts, tighten it all up and solder from behind. The reason we tighten these up before we solder them is just to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. Because if you solder them and they're a little bit crooked, they won't go through the panel holes and then you have a problem. So this goes for pretty much any kit, not just prototypes, but any kit you build. You don't want to tighten them too much right now because after soldering them we will remove them let's just solder this up now right now we don't worry about the circuit too much we're just securing the components to the circuit board just a tiny bit of solder is all you need try not to use more than necessary so you don't risk making bridges now all of the Jackson pots. Let's just do the position lugs for the pots. There you go. Now we don't want any shorts. Simply use a multimeter in continuity mode. So it actually beeps if there's a connection. Here it beeps, here it doesn't, here it doesn't. These should beep. Pot body ground same here so it looks like I didn't make any bridges these two actually do connect because the switch connects to the tip on these jacks if nothing's plugged in so you actually want to hear a beep here but you don't want to hear a beep between this and this because that's ground and tip this already feels like a module you look a pretty sturdy construction here now we get to think about making connections and with our schematics I'm gonna put them right in front of me you should draw your own copy and take a look so we need to solder some ground connections so the first ground connections we're gonna solder will be the potentiometer clockwise 
So when with all of the potentiometers to the left, we want to measure and see which two legs short each other, and that's these two. So middle and right. Then the middle is the wiper, so we know that the right leg is the one that has to be has to go to ground. We can use a little marker to point out all of our ground connections. So we want this to be ground, all of these right ones to be ground. We want the position lugs to be ground, so we ground the pot bodies. That helps keep them from picking up interference. So this is all ground stuff right here that I'm marking. Well, on the jacks, where you see two pins very close together, the outermost pin is the ground one, right? The little one that goes outside of the of the jack. So why not mark those two? And these ones are inverted relative to these ones. So that's actually this one here, 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 and this one here. So those are all ground connections. So I'm gonna shut up for a while and just solder up all of my ground. I use some solid core wire for most of the ground connections. It's a good idea to keep your multimeter handy to check continuity and make sure all of the grounds are connected together. This is also a good time to solder on the IC socket for the op amp, as well as the two decoupling capacitors. While assembling the power conditioning PCB, I screwed up and soldered the power header on backwards. So I had to remove it and replace it with a bare connector. Make sure you install the header correctly. This little PCB is not necessary, but it's a good idea for prototyping because it protects your system from any mistakes you may have made, such as shorts or inverted power connections. It mounts onto the rest of the module quite nicely with the included spacers. Next, just start making the connections as you see them in the schematics. Each person will have their own strategies for doing this, and you'll get better at it with practice. I like using the component leads themselves to make connections as much as possible. That way I avoid too many wires going everywhere and creating a rat's nest. So don't cut off your resistor leads too soon. Make sure they're not useful for making circuit connections first. Again, use your meter a lot to check that your connections are solid. I made an annoying mistake. I connected the inputs straight into the circuit, forgetting all about the volume pots. So I had to remove all those cables and route them correctly through the six pots on top. When you're done, just check your power connector for shorts, place the panel back on, tighten all the nuts, place the knobs on the pots, and turn it on. Since this isn't a ready-made kit, it's likely that not everything will work right away. I had to do about 15 minutes of troubleshooting before mine worked as expected. Now let's see it do its thing. Alright, so let's come up with a quick demo patch to make sure this mixer is working as it should. So what I'll do is I'll use the top mixer to mix audio. So I'll throw in three oscillators. Let's get the uh, pulse wave from the ether oscillator. We'll put a uh, lizard 2, this old version of the lizard 2 as in oscillator mode and send that to input 2. And my even VCO, uh, we'll take the saw wave from that and plug it into input 3. And we'll take the output into my leapfrog filter and we'll send that out to record. So let's take off uh, 
resonance there. Let's open up the filter for now and here we go. That's one oscillator, another oscillator, and another oscillator. Wow, they seem to be in tune. There we go. So great. The audio top mixer is working for audio perfectly. Now let's send now let's send three modulation sources to that filter and see what happens. So we'll send that into the exponential FM input of the filter and the first source will be an LFO like that the other one will be a sequencer uh, which I will need to send a clock to so let's grab a clock to the sequencer and that's Here's the other foe. All right. And uh, the other one can be a uh, sample and hold. Maybe. Sample and hold here from the Yarkasin sample and hold. So that's this thing right here. Okay, so that's the sample and hold, the sequencer, and the LFO. Let's make it a sine wave LFO. A little bit less. A little bit of that sequencer and a little bit of that sample and hold. And there we go. Looks like our mixer is working perfectly. Cool, that's it. Have fun, stay noisy, and see you next week.